Good afternoon. I'm Gloria Nelson with Tug, and we are delighted to have you join us today for our Tug Connects 365 programming. As you settle in and get ready for the start of today's webinar, let me give a brief introduction for Tug, the usergroup.org, for both our current members and those of you who represent organizations that have not yet joined our online community of Infor Distribution Software users. Now, I can say that we've all heard the phrase knowledge is power. And with confidence that after today's presentation, you'll be waking up tomorrow with a little more of both. Tug webinars, online forums, and member events facilitate the timely exchange of ideas and information to help you work smarter and with more confidence. If you're currently a member, it pays to get even more involved. And if you're not, please visit our website to discover why 2300 heads are better than one to have you be the best at what you do each and every day. Before we get started, let me touch base on some housekeeping information. Buckle up for 45 to 60 minutes, depending upon your level of engagement. We wanna make sure that this is really interactive, that you get to express yourself, ask questions, and also build into the community so that you all walk away understanding what additional solutions you have and anything that you know kind of goes bump along the way and how to circumvent that. So please open your Q&A bubble and also your chat window because Jared is going to be monitoring both of those very carefully. And we also will be inviting you at times to unmute yourself and be able to jump into the conversation as well. So regarding intellectual property permissions, you have full permission to go ahead and take screenshots, copy and paste chat into a note card should that help you in your day-to-day -day business. So now I'm delighted to first hand things over to Rhea Murray, who is our network A plus network group leader. Rhea, welcome today. And I'm going to let you take it from here. Thanks, Gloria. I really appreciate it. Um, and thank you everyone for registering for this presentation. I just wanted to say to all of you, if you are not currently a TUG member, please consider joining. We are a supportive group with, with a lot of valuable knowledge in distribution and also in the A plus ERP. Um, if you are a member and if you're considering being a member, um, we're also looking for volunteers to be involved with the A plus network group. Um, we'd like to have some new people on the board um, so if you're interested in doing that, please contact me at my contact information there. Also, um, if you have any ideas or requests for topics for future webinars, we're open to any suggestions that anyone has, please let us know. We'd love to give you what you need to help you with your business. So without further ado, um, Action Associates is a valued partner to the a community, and we're happy to have them here presenting this um, this webinar. Um, I'd like now to introduce Phil Mayer. He is the a Practice Manager at Action Associates. Phil? Sure, and uh, I'll actually jump in here to begin with here, Rhea. Uh, my name is Jared Gator. I'm a Marketing Coordinator here at Action Associates. And uh, Phil, if you could actually go ahead and swap your display settings over to the full screen, please. Okay, one second. Sure. You can tell we're doing it live. <laughs> Is that okay? Uh, no, we still need to swap over the display settings. Okay, hold on. Let's see if that helps. Nope. Okay, looks like you need to reshare your screen. Okay, hold on. And one second. There we go, Phil. Awesome. Thank you for that. So again, my name is Jared Gator. I'm a marketing coordinator here at Action Associates. Today's presentation is titled The Results for our N4A Plus Third-Party Add-on Solution Survey. Today's presenter is going to be our practice manager here for A Plus Division, Phil Mayer. Uh, thank you, Phil, for joining us. If you would like to go to the next slide, please. Yep. As far as the agenda is concerned for today, we're going to go over some quick information about Action Associates. Go into those serving polling, like talking about the actual polling results itself, but we wanna really dive into how we conducted the survey because what's the point of data unless you know how we acquired said data. Then once we get into the survey results, that's going to take up the majority of our time today. We have quite a few results to get to, so we're gonna jump right into that here shortly. Then we're gonna end with some concluding thoughts in that Q&A. But as far as who we are and about action here, we're nearly 200 employees with 5,500 customers. We are a national ERP software reseller and IT infrastructure provider focused on the construction, 
architectural engineering and real estate, also distribution, manufacturing industries as well. We have two company owned data centers, one located in Toledo, Ohio, which is about a half hour south in, of uh, Northwest Ohio. Then we have a second geo redundant location located in Charlotte, North Carolina. We are the 19th on the 2021 accounting today of our list of 100. Uh, as far as recognitions are concerned, we have several accolades that are up on screen as well. And as far as our in partnerships concerned, we are the largest North American distribution partner. We have 25 plus years as a gold partner and we are the 2020 Infor Circle of Excellence partner as well. But at this time, I would like to go ahead and pass things over to Phil. So Phil, whenever you're ready, please feel free. Good, uh, thank you, Jared. And, and thank you, Tug, for having me here today. I'm happy to be here. I've been a longtime member of Tug, attended many of the sessions and, and uh, webinars that, that have been done over the years, as well as the events. And I encourage you know those of you that are, haven't been involved with Tug to consider you know, being more active. Um, I think there's a lot of value there. I always find it valuable when customers talk to other customers. Um, you know, you talk to info, you talk to action, but I think the best value is when a customer talks to another customer. Um, sometime in uh, around 2015, this group got together and did a, did a survey. Uh, I have that survey uh, handy. It's a PDF, about 25 slides. Uh, and they uh, internally did a question about what people were using and solutions like that. And I thought last year with Tug, I got together and said, hey, I think, I think it's time we update that survey. And I kind of, uh, today on this uh, is really the, um, initial uh, viewing of, of the results of that. But what I did is I we sent out those uh, polling back in April through through August. We have a really good list of installed uh, A plus customers, uh, about 300, 350. Um, we got some back, some we got about 27 uh, company uh, contacts who, who actually completed it, about 25 companies. Um, some of you may have seen some of these emails that, that Jared crafted and, and we sent out, uh, but hopefully, uh, as I said, in the future, we'd like to continue this little process. Um, and what I did is I took the survey from 2015, uh, and you'll see some of the questions, and then I started to update it with some, some newer technology. And what I found recently in the last couple of months was that customers were asking me, because generally what happens is, I support about 140 A-plus customers. And as customers bubble up needs to my team, it comes up to me and like, hey, what are we going to do about this? Whether it's a salesperson or, an, or a consultant or a programmer. Um, so it's really up to me to be fluent in not only A-plus, but all the add-on solutions, as well as the customers that actually have those solutions. So I can say, oh, someone's interested in you know, Microsoft CRM connected to A-plus. You know, will that work? And how well does it work? Well, I can quickly you know, call out five customers that I know personally that use that solution. And I can you know, connect somebody, as long as it's not competitive, uh, to, to those people. But the value of Tug is that you can, you can make those connections yourself. Uh, it's just that uh, I've been in this uh, field a long time and, and really understand all the customers and, and all the solutions. So can everyone see that first uh, survey slide? Is there anything I can do to, is, does it look okay? Yep, so Phil, we do see that. And before we jump in here, do you mind if we start that first poll? Sure. Sure, so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and launch the first poll now. The question reads, how many third-party solutions are you using that integrate into your A-plus environment? So you'll see the answers on your screen now. If you would go ahead and take some time to go and answer those. We have the answers of zero, one through three, four through six, five through nine, or 10 plus. So we'll go ahead and leave it open here for about another 15 seconds. So again, thank you for participating in this right now. This is just kind of giving us a little bit more information for when we're going through the survey here. You know, A plus uh, as a solution, um, you know, customers always have some sort of a third party add on, could be Optio, could be uh, CRM, something. So I'm, I'm kind of curious what it may be. Um, it's a pretty robust application. So many of these, uh, it's much less third party centric than I know other solutions are. So just tell me when you're good to go there, Jared. Awesome, I went ahead and I just ended it and I'll share the results now. So you should be seeing those on your screen. So you'll see that as far as results are concerned, we had two people go ahead and do zero, which is the 29%. We had one through three come out at 43%. 14% of you were four to six. And then you had another 14% at five to nine. So overall it looks like one to three is about the top solution with this group here. 
Right. Okay. Well, the first solution, you know, business intelligence um, and reporting. And as you can see here, uh, you know, MITS, also known as White Cup, is really the dominant uh, tool set. Uh, you can see some of the other ones out there. Cognos was out there. Uh, some other uh, customers wrote in. Um, Microsoft BI is, I guess, is growing. Uh, I don't really know Stratum. Uh, I do know CoreView. And, and really, uh, when I ran my company, MCS, we, we really went heavy into CoreView. Um, and most of our customers had that. Uh, since I've come to Action in December of 2018, Action uses MITS or White Cup, and I've really found it to be a terrific product. So I understand why this uh, percentage is so high. Um, it's a very simple interface to the to the to the software uh, to the data. Um, and interesting at Action. Um, I manage customers, I manage vendors, I manage AR, um, and I don't access the A plus screens at all. I just use MITS and it allows me to go in and I wanna look at AR, I can export that. So uh, I really, um, I was a really big core view bigot for many years. Uh, and now I've kind of turned into a, a MITS uh, evangelist. I really, I really think it's good. Um, and I think Jared, if anyone has like a question or they can put something at the chat, if they say, gee, you know, I use so-and-so or, or, you know, it would be good to know that because then I can add it to the survey for next year. Um, and these were some other ones. I know Tableau was a pretty uh, robust uh, solution as well. Let me get to the next slide. Come on. Okay, so CRM, and, and this is something that I've always found interesting. To me, CRM is no clear dominant player. And this result really shows that, that, um, you know, as you can see here, well, maybe WP CRM uh, can, but, you know, Enforce CRM is out there, Microsoft CRM is out there, Salesforce is out there, WP CRM, uh, HubSpot, uh, Microsoft Dynamics are some other ones, but as you can see the WP CRM, uh, which is a fully integrated uh, CRM package and what's nice about WP is that it hits a pretty reasonable uh, price point um, and probably in our less than 50 A plus customers, uh, I, I'd have to say probably WP CRM is most dominant. As the customers begin to scale, uh, you know, I see Salesforce in my greater than 100 user A plus customers, um, Enforce CRM is growing um, and Microsoft CRM was the early, had the early lead um, and uh, is, uh, I don't know, due to the, maybe now that it's in the cloud, I, I might kind of see it come back a little bit, but um, uh, I, I think lately, I think Salesforce has been winning a, a bit uh, and WP CRM. Talk about credit card processing, uh, dominant, dominated by SendPaws. Um, I think uh, they've been a pretty good vendor for a long time. They really own that space. They've handed the tokenization. Uh, I think I think all the info products besides A plus like fax and CSD slash SXE also use SendPaws. So I can understand why within our base, you know, it's 75% of the customers are really using SendPaws. Curbstone was an old AS400 legacy based uh, application for many, many years ago, but it, it still works. It's still an active vendor. Um, SolupePay uh, kind of been tailing off. So it looks to me like, you know, SendPaws is really going to be the dominant winner uh, going forward. And I've overall heard positive results from SendPaws. I, I think it's a tricky business. And I, I know that there's definitely technical issues from time to time with SendPaws, but for the most part, uh, I feel like they've been a pretty good vendor. E-commerce kind of falls to me, this is similar to CRM. Again, no clear dominant winner. Um, uh, well, let me retract that. I guess the storefront, you know, as many of you know, the storefront came out in around 2008, believe it or not, written by Daly and Walcott, Carl Mercito. Uh, very interestingly architectured solution with the commerce gateway. Um, and the info storefront is, you know, still 60% of the customers are still using the storefront. Uh, it's a very reliable, efficient uh, tool set. And I think people struggle when they try to move off of it. The integration to the storefront is really wonderful. 
And what I've noticed is when other customers maybe move to another solution such as Magento, um, uh, what else here? Uh, even Fisher Town, uh, they continue to use that gateway because it is a very efficient way to get price and availability. Um, it's real time goes back to, to A plus and gives you that real time uh, integration. So I think a lot of customers and you need to be careful here when you work with Infor and you own the storefront and you move to another solution like Magento um, and you do use that commerce gateway, just make sure it's properly licensed uh, because initially when people bought the storefront, they bought the storefront, the catalog and the gateway. And it was meant to be sold as a suite. Uh, the gateway itself could be purchased individually, but Infor uh, from years ago had that like very expensive. They really encourage you to buy the whole suite. So if you're gonna use the gateway, just be careful with your licensing to make sure that you are compliant. Um, that's definitely something that uh, that has come up. So what else is, is here? What else? This is a good one. Um, Epi Server, which is formerly Insight, is uh, actively growing. Uh, that solution is one that I see in my really biggest A plus accounts. Uh, and many of them used it for many years. Um, so I see that one growing pretty good in the bigger accounts. I see my smaller customers grow, growing to like a Magento uh, and kind of fumbling, bumbling through the uh, integration, maybe some flat file integration or something like that, maybe not like real time. Uh, but Magento is a good solution. Um, and I think there's opportunity and, and we've always looked at this, um, you know, Infor Rhythm, um, which is the Infor product. Um, you know, if you talk to Brian Bonneau, the roadmap, he's indicating, yes, it's gonna come, no, it's not. So it's a little up in the air. Um, I think that's a terrific product. Um, it's just a little bit unknown if it's uh, available for A plus or if it's gonna be available in the future. But I think that's something to, to pay attention to and, and just you know, think think about it a little bit. But I think in this area, this is a good area to maybe call us, call your rep, and um, and we can kind of connect you with with people. Um, I think this Fisher Town is more geared for a particular industry, maybe Jansen or paper, I believe. Um, so this is good. And I think what's interesting about this is, uh, you know, if you come to a tug meeting, uh, there's usually a breakout session specifically for st uh, storefront uh, customers so that you can get into a room and, and hear people like, hey, what are you using? And there's really a nice open exchange of, uh, of information. And I think uh, this is obviously, uh, you know, an area where uh, people are really winning is that my customers in the last couple of years with the pandemic, the ones that have invested in the storefront fully integrated are the ones that are really winning and able to scale very quickly. This this uh, WebSphere Commerce is again, uh, a very robust uh, industrial strength solution. Uh, we have some customers using that. I, I really feel like that is a really good solution. Um, and Action's role in a lot of this is in the case of like WebSphere is, is just helping with the integration. And most of these solutions, um, other than uh, in uh, EpiServer, which we do have some services around. Um, usually our role is really just to help the customers with the integration. And Phil, it looks like we had some people asking, uh, no Shopify, they're surprised not to see that on the list. Okay, well, uh, you know what, well, that's a good observation. And Jared, uh, that's one that we would like to add to the survey next year, um, which is gonna go out in the spring. So I'm gonna try to get it out every spring. Uh, and, and that's good, I'll, I'll make that like a checkbox rather than these, these write-in boxes. So mm -hmm. that's good, to, good observation. Mm -hmm. And Phil, would you like me to go ahead and allow people to unmute at this time if they would like to add in any other e-commerce solutions? Sure, Let's see if there's any other dialogue here. Um, so everybody has the ability to unmute now if you wanted to add any comments about e-commerce solutions that you might have not seen up here that you're surprised not to see or one that you currently use or one that you're even looking into. So feel free to unmute at this time. Okay, we'll keep going. All right. So financial reporting, again, completely dominated by F9. Um, Infor owns F9. They didn't originally, and they purchased it, and now it's a it's really a really good, reasonably priced solution. I think it's like under ten thousand dollars now, um, and it provides nice financial reporting. We know that the 
financial reporting within A plus is pretty clunky, uh, but my advanced customers um, add the F9 product, which allows you to just automatically takes the data out of A plus and puts it into a perfectly formatted uh, uh, Excel like spreadsheet. So I think F9 is the clear dominant winner. Uh, there's a few other, I have no experience with these, these other packages, but I know Hyperion is out there, but again, here, maybe there's a customer out there that's really looking at the, uh, at, you know, global software spreadsheet server. And, and, you know, I have as the keeper of the survey, you know, you can call me and say, Hey, we're interested in global. So, you know, who's that customer. And then I can look on the survey and say, Oh, that's so-and-so. And, and I can connect you perhaps to the CFO and get immediate feedback. Is that a good solution, a bad solution, and things like that? And I, I feel like that's going to be the value. I'm unfortunately going to be the, the holder of the information and connect the dots. And uh, I'll be sensitive to customers that are competitive and uh, in, in you know, similar industries. Uh, but I've always had that, uh, the ability to, to connect, try to connect those customers. So. Content management, um, uh, again, uh, looks like SharePoint. Um, you know, we're kind of seeing uh, this Enterworks is, uh, is, is, a, is one that we see out there uh, quite a bit. So this is PIM, Product Information Management. Um, and this is something that interesting, wasn't in our survey five years ago, and, and, and now it really is. Um, the ability to, to manage content, to manage, uh, you know, item numbers, descriptions, things like that. The, PIMs are becoming very important. We do get a lot of questions about this, and uh, you know we've been directing quite a few to Interworks. Uh, I, I happen to know a few customers that are using that. Document management, it's been around so long. Uh, years back, uh, the only game in town was IMS 21. That was an I-series based application. Um, then what kind of came along around 2010 was Max Recall out of Atlanta. Uh, that's been a really well adopted um, uh, solution. And what's nice about Max Recall is that it was fully integrated with A+. They added all the uh, uh, integration so that you could buy that solution and go. IMS 21 uh, required some, uh, some integration, but it seems to me like a lot of the customers like IntelliChief was the old Vanguard, um, the old, um, I forgot the uh, the forms package, Formtastic package. Uh, a lot of customers have done some real creative things around this <clears throat> and use it in many non-traditional ways, uh, document management. Some people scan their proof of delivery. Some people let AP, AP check AP uh, invoices come in. They scrape off the data and they pump it into A+. So uh, I think that this particular area is gonna be an area of focus as more and more people wanna get into digital uh, automation. Uh, we're doing a ton of work around AP. Uh, many people want to, have, you know, uh, import uh, AP vouchers into A+. And so the, what they're receiving is PDFs. These solutions scrape off the data, populate an A+, file, and then we bring it right in. Um, asset management, this is a terrific solution. I would really encourage customers to, to use it. And personally, I only really knew about two of them, one that I've been recommending, and I do like the Info solution, it's called Info EAM. Um, and first, let me explain what asset management is, because it's um, as business owners or businesses that you all work in, there's a lot of assets in the business, and those include uh, furnitures, fixtures, trucks, machinery, computers. Uh, and what asset management does is you record those assets into the system. Uh, for example, maybe you own a building, you would put in uh, the building as an asset. You would maybe note that the air conditioning units, the location when you bought them, the warranty, all that other information, maybe when maintenance is due on them. And what uh, EAM can do is it asset management, it can then track those assets and and promote to you, hey, you got to do maintenance on this particular uh, chiller or this uh, particular uh, refrigerator needs to be maintained. So I would encourage all of, and I really think this is a terrific fit for A plus customers, uh, anyone in wholesale distribution and manufacturing. So the clear, which is, I didn't know that Sage had such a good foothold in this particular space. Um, so I thought that was, this was kind of an eye opener for me. I knew Maximo was an IBM solution, uh, but I think that's a very big solution. I know that Maximo 
is used by the US Army to track all the assets. Uh, I know that was used in Iran. Uh, I don't know if it's used, uh, probably Afghanistan to track all those assets. And uh, it's a very powerful uh, industrial strength solution. Infor's solution is really terrific and I, uh, really hits all the right price points and probably integrated with ION. So definitely would be, uh, if you're an Infor, uh, obviously everyone is an A plus customer, but definitely something you might wanna look at. Um, learning management, you know, Infor had a product called EPAC um, that, that, that we were selling for, for many years and learning management is, uh, there's some other solutions here. I don't know any of them. I'm just letting people know that these are the solutions. But again, uh, what you can do with learning management is you can record perhaps uh, an order entry sequence um, and with annotations and notes and things like that, and then train people. Rather than hand train people, you can create a whole library of um, learning management that people can then take classes, maybe in accounts receivable, accounts payable, warehouse management. And, and you know, we talk about, you know, people worry about, you know, people in their business leaving, they, they know so much information, you know, why not deploy a learning management solution and ask them to document their daily work? Hey, I do receivers, here's how I do it, and create a little, uh, you know, three to five minute video so that if that person wins the lottery, uh, you have some nice, um, some nice documentation and business goes on. <clears throat> Service and repair, it's kind of interesting here. Uh, this is the, the ability, uh, as more of our distributors are getting into this, where they sell something, for example, perhaps uh, AC, uh, we have a customer that sells ACs, they go out and they, uh, they service it. They not only sell the unit, they install it and then do quarterly services on it. And these are some of the solutions that they're using, Service Max. This Overdrive Solutions is kind of the one I'm, I'm really familiar with a little bit. It was written, it was a, a Jeff Dallas, an old Daly and Walcott uh, developer had created one. And I know that um, I can see, you know, it's definitely entrenched. Uh, I know uh, that there's a, another application called ISM that Infor uh, is starting to sell. It's not integrated with A+, but Again, here's another, and it wasn't on my survey. I should have added it. I think I will next year. Um, I think it's something to look at. Uh, again, you'd reach out to an action rep or info rep if you're direct and ask them about ISM. I'm going to keep moving. I know we want to get this done. Uh, I think I have about another 15 minutes of slides and we can open it up for some questions. Um, enterprise workflow, this is coming up. Uh, this is important. I, I'd like to see... Um, you know, really what, what we're talking about here is, uh, and I get this a lot lately, is, hey, we want to connect to A plus to, you know, uh, you know, some sort of a solution. And we really need, you know, there's really no dominant player. I know my, I do have customers that use ION, which is a great connectivity tool. Um, but here's where we want to be able to use a workflow like application to connect to A plus. I know ION works well internally within A+. We have the workflow module, uh, but again, it's not an enterprise workflow that can sit on top of multiple, um, multiple A+, uh, applications. Uh, billing management, completely dominated by Bill Trust. Um, so that was pretty clear cut winner. Those of you who don't know Bill Trust, it's, uh, it's a solution that uh, allows you, I've had one involvement with it, with a customer that had the storefront. We were able to uh, present as the storefront does, you can look at open invoices. What Bill Trust allows you to do is click that invoice, you know, reprint it, whatever you want to do, and also pay it. So uh, uh, Bill Trust is a pretty good solution. Um, and I know it's been around a long time. And um, if, if that's the type of functionality that you're, you're looking for, obviously we have four customers that are using it. Uh, it looks like the, the clear cut winner. Okay, we talk collaboration, have to believe, I guess this is just completely dominated by Microsoft, right? All three, the teams, SharePoint, Office. Um, I just, it's completely dominating. I, I see it in 
all my customers, we use it in action. Uh, not much to say about it. It works really well. Everyone's pretty happy with it. I know there's some people out there that <clears throat> like Google products, uh, and I've never heard of uh, Lump app, Loom apps uh, before, but uh, this looks like clearly a, a Microsoft win. <clears throat> Sales tax. Um, Interesting, Avalara dominating here, eight to one. Vertex was in early. And what I learned about Vertex is Vertex was a very upstream sales tax solution, meaning that it, they really went after really big com companies uh, to solve their tax problems. Global companies, global 500 companies. I think Amazon uses Vertex. Um, I think is kind of, you know, so again, really big companies and what, so it really didn't lend itself to an A plus customer that's maybe doing 25, 50, 100, 200 million. Um, and Avalara kind of slid in uh, and has been dominating that market. I think Avalara beat them to the cloud. Um, and um, I, I think Avalara, uh, Avalara um, is, the, is the clear cut uh, winner for most of the A plus accounts. Uh, Vertex, uh, is definitely still out there. They're they're really big. Um, we'll see uh, we'll see how this space uh, turns out. But you know, with sales tax becoming so complicated, I can't stress enough that you you know consider these solutions because they really they really make your life easier. Uh, IT ticketing. I not too involved in this, but I I did want to share that you know Spicework, Service Desk. Um, Zendesk is, is one that, that I've seen before. Um, so that's another uh, pretty good one that I think you should you know, think about. But clearly, Spiceworks uh, is dominating this space. EDI, um, let's see, what have we got? Open text dominating pretty much. Uh, that's the traditional, you know, the old, uh, you know, the old Novus product. Uh, it's text base. It runs on the i series. It's uh, it's hard to uh, you know. It's fully integrated with A plus. It is expensive uh, to deploy initially, but I can tell you that EDI over the past two years has been exploding, and the customers that have this technology deployed. I've really been able to advance uh, their businesses quite a bit in the pandemic. There's so much EDI business, and, and we all thought EDI, 850s, 856s, we're all going to go away, but uh, it's here to stay, and it's rapidly growing. It's probably our fastest growing service area uh, at Action, is helping our customers bring up more and more trading partners. Uh, we're getting into uh, price catalogs. We're getting into 3PL integration, and I think it's the 945 data sets where our customers are acting as 3PLs for, for uh, e-tailers. Um, so, uh, uh, you know, so that's been good. I know IBM Sterling Commerce is very solid. SPS Commerce is, is good as well. Um, and I, I think that's a duplication. I think that uh, the open text um, is, is the same as the, uh, the i-series one. But we at Action really only work with open text. Uh, we like it. It's simple for us. Uh, and we've not you know, spent a lot of time trying to use another e EDI. That's kind of the, our preferred uh, EDI uh, solution. Inventory management, this is good. IMNP. You know, that's the integrated uh, or an add-on module to A+, plus you can buy. Uh, AIM, which came out about three, about six years ago now, has uh, is is really taking hold. There's a lot of good tech. Not, again, this is info product, info product. Uh, Overdrive is a non-info product. But uh, I think IM and P for the customers that use it really like it a lot. AIM, the same thing. Uh, this overdrive was a good solution back in 2010, 9, I mean, 9, 10, 13, 14, when the AIM didn't exist and IMNP was pretty uh, cumbersome. But I think Info has, or Info has really smoothed that out quite a bit. But uh, the overdrive solution from Jeff Dallas's company uh, has, has been pretty good. Warehouse management solutions. This makes total sense to me. I mean, you look at A plus, you know, 96% of the customers use it. You know, it's a fully integrated WMS and, you know, it does a really good job for all of our customers. 
Um, so I'm not surprised to see that uh, so, so dominating. Uh, but we do see, you know, uh, Manhattan Associates. Uh, we do see Infor Solution out there. High jump is something we're paying attention to uh, because we know that it's a, uh, you know, again, high jump Manhattan, even Infor, those are standalone WMSs that, you know, honestly have more functionality than A+. Uh, but perhaps, uh, you know, there's a price to pay for that integration, lack of integration, let me just say that. And, you know, our, you know the, the A plus WMS was really well written and really well um, planned for a small A plus customer. So I'm not surprised to see this. Uh, voice picking, uh, there's really three of them, Vocalec, Voxware, and, and Lucasware. Um, ENP, which I, I, I haven't heard of those other two, but a customer wrote, two customers wrote that in. So I assume that's a pretty uh, reasonable solution as well. Um, again, you know, my most advanced customers do voice picking. Uh, you know, we were involved in that, you know, customers who have food warehouses, who have a lot of multi-language, you can have a voice picking system that just reads like a headset like I'm wearing. It just talks to the person, go to here, pick this aisle, say confirm, and they go, and it can be in any language. So this is probably an area that's going to continue to grow. Um, probably going to get more inquiries on this, uh, you know, as, as we go forward. I put pricing in there because I'm anxious to see if anyone, you know, uh, you know, everyone uses A plus pricing, but there was some talk a few years ago about, uh, I guess these are solutions, price links and G Suite, which I don't know, uh, about putting pricing in the cloud where we could take some parameters, maybe a customer, a quantity, and pass it up into the cloud and let, let a service actually do the pricing and then pass back down into A+. So uh, I, uh, it was just something that I was uh, talking to some customers about and they would ask me about, but I don't think we ever deployed that, but I just think that's something to, uh, to take, you know, to, to be on the radar. So I kind of added this and I'm not surprised that everyone uses A plus pricing. And that's just an area, honestly, over the last, you know, 10 years where, you know, there's been, if you look at the, you know, what came out in, 10, in 804, 805, I mean, 804, 10.0, 10 10.1, 10.2, 10 10.3, a lot of pricing. So if you're struggling with some pricing uh, capabilities, it's definitely worthwhile to download our, uh, our upgrade book that's on the Action website and see all the enhanced, you know, BOGO price and buy one, get one free, um, you know, all sorts of uh, mixing, matching. So it's, it's been pretty enhanced. Proof of delivery, uh, next recall, I guess, uh, is, is, is been good. Again, uh, I don't know a lot of these solutions. I know ProShip is pretty good. Um, every, this looks like it's, uh, you know, again, you know, someone in the warehouse is making these decisions. Um, we kind of sometimes hear after the fact, oh, we added this one. And, uh, you know, I just want to, if a customer is going to look at proof of delivery, I'd like to just let them know that, hey, these are some solutions that other A plus customers are using. And if someone had a question about uh, ShipLink, uh, which I believe, um, you know, we, we can connect you. So it gets a little, we're getting a little more finite near, you know, we're kind of drilling into the warehouse uh, with some really uh, tech, you know, technical questions. Uh, but it's interesting to see RoadNet, you know, dominate this space uh, pretty, pretty well. Uh, I know DQ was, was a, is a pretty good application as well. Um, and I don't understand the Jakarta's uh, road. Okay, it's RoadNet Roadshow. Those are really the two <coughs> dominant players. Much like voice, voice, uh, voice picking is Voxware and Vocalect. So, um, you know, these are just some other solutions. But it looks like RoadNet is is pretty much dominating this uh, this truck routing. Then you get into logistics. Um, you know, again. Now we're, you know, we, we're in the warehouse now. We want to do some shipping of some packages and, and what are customers using? So what we can see here is they're using ProShip. They're using, I guess, an Info third party. Many of our customers use ODBC to WorldShip and to FedEx. Varsity is in our biggest A-plus customers are all using Varsity shipping. Uh, it's a, it's a legacy-based, I-series-based uh, uh, 
uh, shipping application that our high volume shippers uh, all use Varsity. And, uh, you know, it's definitely an industrial strength shipping solution. Um, so um, if you're doing a lot of shipping, uh, third party, 3PL, um, things like that, uh, Varsity is definitely something to look at. The integration, um, it's not easy, but once our customers are up on Varsity, uh, they love it. So just plug for Varsity. Just a few more uh, slides to go. Um, DOT reporting. Um, again, I don't know this solution very well, but I, I did, you know, I'm glad to publish this so that I think if you were looking for it, it's definitely worth checking them out. Again, DQ, I, I thought there was more adoption with DQ. They've been around A plus for a long time. Not sure why they're not uh, showing up in the survey results, but maybe uh, maybe if I can get a wider net out there, we might see them come down, come on. E-logs, which are uh, shipping logs um, or um, uh, how customers are shipping and, and the ability to, uh, if you go out and make 20 stops, the e-log uh, shows all those stops and how you did. Just a couple more. Hazmat, uh, same thing, max recall, uh, you know, material data safety sheets, the ability to store them, have them, print them. Uh, let's say you're going on a uh, you know delivery. A lot of our customers have this fully integrated in. They can pr print the pick slips, the delivery tickets, and the hazmat sheets uh, all in one package so that when they're on the road, they have everything they need. Okay, so those were the data points that, uh, that I queried and um, you know really, uh, I hope people found some of that information, but I think the, the key to everything that I just presented, if you think about it, A plus is the hub and it's going to continue to be that. And that's what I see my customers doing. They, they like A plus, it's basically a transaction processor uh, and they're adding more and more third party products around it. I think customers are reluctant to do what I call a heart transplant uh, to replace the transaction processor and instead, they're being encouraged by management to find uh, what I call these point solutions. So I like the fact that you know we ha now have a little deck of point solutions, and I'd like to find out what other ones might be out of, might be out there. So to do that, I'm going to make this survey an annual event. We'll try to get more people to to answer it. If you answered it last year, again, uh, we'll just send it out again. The way I did it was. Um, with a tool uh, that just goes out. It's just, it, the survey takes like, I'd say two minutes, less than, less than a minute. Those questions come up, you just click the options or you can write in your solution. And honestly, to fill out that, to do the surveys less than, less than one minute. Um, and then we get the data and then uh, I can present it and then hopefully connect, connect, people, in, in the, uh, connect people in the future. The other thing that, these survey questions, I'd like this change management came up recently and, uh, you know, the, uh, customers are getting bigger now, RPG or, and, you know, and, and Java and, and the customers want change management where, uh, you know, they want to start making more formal changes to the ERP, meaning, okay, we're going to make a change to OE 101B, uh, you know, who, what's the last change we made, who did it, so that if there is any sort of uh, problems, you can go right to your change management software, roll back those changes, and also document it. So ideally, I'd like to get, I'm going to add that next year and, and um, I'm trying to field a customer right now that's asking me about change management, what, what other people are using, and I really don't have anything yet. And the other thing that's coming up is this integra inter enterprise integration platform. <clears throat> you know, it's hard to integrate, I know, to DB2 or, or A+. So what's happening is um, this integra in enterprise integration platform is a data set. And I see some of my customers, what they'll do is they'll pump um, they'll pump their A-plus data into a uh, what they call a data lake. Uh, and then they'll do all the integration off of that data lake. Um, I think ION is really a very good integration integration platform, uh, but in, not, it's a little unknown how that's going to work with an A-plus uh, application. I think ION is terrific. If you pay maintenance to Infor, I would encourage you to encourage Infor to, to really finish the integration or, or make public the integration that they've done. Uh, we have a number of customers that use ION. Uh, it's a great way to get data in and out of A+. That was really the intent. Um, so it's definitely worth um, 
you know, I have customers that use it. It's all XML. It creates XML data in and out of A+, very organized. Um, and it's, it's the base code or the base enterprise integration platform in all of the Infor products, including the next gen products that eventually people might look at. Um, and it, it, they did uh, bring it downstream to some of the legacy packages. And um, I'd be curious to know what people are using uh, for en enterprise integration platform. And then maybe there's some other solutions uh, that you're interested in. I'd love to hear, hear those, uh, what they might be so that I can add them to the survey. And those so, solutions, we would actually like to pull a survey real quick on you guys, if you don't mind here. I'm going to go ahead and pull this poll here. So um, if you would, go ahead and just take a chance. If you're interested in learning more about any of those solutions just in general, feel free to just to go ahead and put your answers in there. So that way we can kind of get a better sense of what you guys are interested in. So we can kind of provide some educational content moving forward on those type of solutions. So again, I'm going to go ahead and leave this open here for about 30 seconds. If you're interested in any of the solutions, feel free to go and enter them. And again, if you have a different solution than the ones that are put on there right now, go ahead and enter that in the chat. Um, also, if you want to go ahead and unmute your phone, I gave you the ability to do that as well. So really just looking to get your participation out of this and see what you're interested in moving forward. All right, give Thank it about another five seconds here. Yep, thanks, Jared. Uh, it's you know one of the things that we don't have really good visibility into the things that customers are doing in the field. You know we know when they call and they they ask for our help, but I'm, I'm always surprised how talented our customers are and how creative they are to solve business problems. You know they uh, had a customer who has um, a, a, a plus software uh, for some reason doesn't own the source code. <clears throat> they do all their development in PHP. I just find that amazing. And uh, they go right at the data. And uh, so I've seen so many talented shops really solve problems uh, using very creative method methods. And I applaud uh, all of you guys. Awesome. Thank you, Phil. And I'm going to go ahead and share those results here real quick, OK? So the question again is, which types of third-party solutions are you most interested in learning more about? Looks like we had 33% of you do a BI or reporting. We also had another 33% that did sales tax on here. E-commerce came in with 17%. EDI also had 17%. Uh, looks like that's all that was voted on. Some of the other solutions though that were not voted on were collaboration, CRM, inventory management, pricing, warehouse management, et cetera. So again, just good to see those solutions and see what we're really interested in moving forward here. But at this time, it does look like we are at our Q&A portion of our session here. And uh, like Gloria said here in the chat, Igor has um, asked quite a few questions here. So let's go ahead and ask, answer some of those questions that he's put in here. So um, first question here for you, Phil, is, uh, let's see here. Uh, does Build Trust allow you to manage checks for AR and AP? I, yes, it does. Okay. Yes. Yep. Awesome. Uh, next one, uh, more of a statement is saying that Avalier is a clear winner when it comes to a lot of retailers over the past five, seven years ago. So just a statement, notice for sales tax, Avalier seems to be the winner there. Okay, good, good, to, good, good, good to hear that. Uh, you know, again, we're, uh, I grew up in a, in a vertex world. Um, and I've seen that transition over to Avalara start around 2008, and um, it continues. It continues to go. It's a it's a really uh, well architected solution. I know people don't always like the price of the solution, but I think the price of a sales tax audit is so much higher. And I I really feel that Avalara will become the ADP of sales tax. Uh, and I think it will be, uh, it just a monster company that just keeps going. Awesome. Another statement I see in here is uh, talking about um, POD uh, applications, Descartes. Have you ever heard of them, Phil? I don't know those solutions very well. Um, and again, that's a good, you know, if there's questions about that and you have a question specifically about that solution, I can probably connect you to the the customer that actually uses it. I can go into the survey and say, well, who, who, who coded that they use that solution? Oh, it's so-and-so, all right. And so I would take this you know, person that has a question and connect them to a, a, the actual A plus user that's actually using it today. And they can just talk. And, and again, a lot of that 
dialogue is what we do at Tug when we, you know, we we talk about solutions. <laughs> um, but <clears throat> I'm happy to make those connections uh, where we can. Awesome. It looks like he just further clarified saying that um, they were bought by Beware or Bearware, excuse me. So, okay. Good. We'll make those uh, those corrections. And and there's so much. I mean, Jared, you know. Uh, you know, EpiServer was Insight, now they're EpiServer, now they're Optimizely. Yeah. Uh, MIT, MITS is now White Cup. So there's definitely a lot of acquisition space going on, uh, acquisitions going on in, in the base. Alrighty, last one I see here is just asking in general about um, Charback solutions. So uh, again, it seems to be a specific solution. I'm not sure if you have much more insight that you can provide on that, Phil. Which one is that? Uh, let me go ahead and I'll spell it for you here. Let me find it again. It just got away from me. All right, so it is a Charback. So C-H-A-R-B-E-G-A-C-K. No, I, I don't know that solution, but again, we'll, we'll add that to the survey uh, and uh, you know, we'll try to get that, get that out there. And if you have any you know, survey you know, type questions or anything like that, I think here's my contact information. Um, uh, Jared, I'm not sure if there's any questions, but things like that, if they can get them to me, I can get them into the survey for next year. And um, I, I like to know about those things. Yeah, and I really do think that everybody's going to find a lot of value within the data that you were able to present here. And then really moving forward, we want to be able to, again, do this survey on an annual basis, if not semi-annual, and be able to get this information in front of those who would like to see it. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and in the chat here, I'm going to post a link. So if you're interested in learning more about uh, extending the functionality of your A plus system, I went ahead and put a link in there. It's to a landing page. It'll have the A plus roadmap on there. Talk about what's new with A plus have the upgrade book in there, which is a upgrade book that's actually maintained by action. It dates back to gosh, Phil, do you know the first entry in there? I think it's like six point something, something it's really been a, early. <laughs> been, a, been a while. Yeah. So we have a lot in there to say the least. And then also cover some of our cloud hosting solutions as well in there. So again, if you had any further questions, though, we're more than happy to answer them. You're more than happy to reach out to Phil as well. Sorry, I was just reading the chat there. So Phil has his contact information up there again. So it is 631-648-2060. That is his direct line. Or you can send him an email at pmayer, spelled P-M-A. E-H-R at action with the K spelled A-K-T-I-O-N dot com. And you're always welcome to go to our website, which is action with the K spelled A-K-T-I-O-N dot com. And we'd be more than happy to get you those additional resources to be able to get you on your way. But at this time, we'll go ahead and check that Q&A and &A, make sure that there's no other questions at this time. Uh, looks like we did have a um, further, yeah. So it looks like we had a further correction here on uh, Charback, it's a monitoring and animate automation solution. So do you know of any of uh, automation or monitoring solutions top mm. of head? I don't, but again, that's an area that I, I you know, uh, I'd love to, I'd love to know a solution that our A plus customers are either using or considering using, uh, because I think that's definitely um, an area where customers in the future will be, uh, will be interested. Awesome. All right. With that, I believe that's all the questions that we had. We really do appreciate your time here, guys. And at this point, I would like to pass things over back to Gloria. So Gloria, whenever you're ready, please feel free. You are very kind. I'd like to also invite Rhea back online as well. Rhea, if you want to jump back on camera, if that's convenient for you. One of the things that I wanted to just also mention is Rhea is our A plus network leader. Action, of course, is very involved with the A plus users. And one of the things that I know it sounds crazy because it seems like we just finished our Tug Connects Digital 2021 programming, but also wanted to mention that our committee is in the process of planning curriculum right now for our 2022 conference. So um, please reach out to Rhea or uh, Jared or Philip, anybody you know that's online today with regard to programming that you would like to see included where you're focusing your attention. And... On that note, I want to thank Rhea so much for joining us. It's wonderful to see you. We haven't seen physically so many people since we were in Dallas. And I want to thank Phil and Jared as always. Jared, I feel, is like a talk show host. He's so wonderful Absolutely. to collaborate with on the, other, on the other side of the computer. 
Also, thank you to everyone who has joined us digitally online today. We hope that you found this extremely helpful. And I will be posting the recorded link on both our public facing website page, as well as in the all members forum. So if you want to share this content with one of your coworkers or one of your colleagues that's currently using the platform, please, by all means, do share once it's posted. Now, our next webinar that we have in coming up is today's, a, a, I feel like a double header. We're jumping on at two o'clock this afternoon with Tug Board member Della Kofelt and Brad Jackson of CyberScience. And they're going to be sharing that your margin starts with your buyer. So if you haven't yet registered, please do and join us this afternoon. And also all of our content is listed now on our website with registration links for next Tuesday and Friday of next week. Now, if you have not had an opportunity to avail the content, there's still plenty of time to register. We have over 280 sessions that are logged online and you have until October 31st to view them from our Digital Tug Connects 2021 conference. Now we'd like to invite those of you who are members of Tug to continue this dialogue. I know that uh, Phil and Jared and Rhea always monitor our A-plus chat boards. So if you want to talk about things in further depth, contribute, if you were a little shy and didn't want to come out of the dark ethers of being online, please post there and you will get some engagement always. And that pretty much is it, folks. So if you're not a member yet of, of Tug, I say, why not? Jump on over to www.theusergroup.org and join us today. And on that note, as they say in Hollywood, that's a wrap.